I've done a whole series on number stations recently which you seem to have enjoyed and the feedback has been great. I thought I'd make this video to tell the story on number stations in the hope that it'll answer many of the questions on previous videos. I suppose earlier videos have been put out with the understanding that everybody knows what the number stations phenomenon actually is and of course that isn't the case. Number stations became popular among shortwave listeners in the 1990s with the birth of monitoring groups dedicated to listening, logging and recording these strange stations, however they first started to be noticed back in the 1960s and 1970s. Listeners realised that they were receiving many stations that followed similar patterns and had similar structures, usually a call sign followed by sets of numbers, usually in groups of five. Although they rose to prominence during the Cold War, they have in fact been around since the First World War. Number stations listeners and groups alike have done their best to explain or just find reason for these stations. Everything we know as civilians, and the word no being in inverted commas has been made up for want of a better word by listeners. The source of number stations has ranged from deep sea factory trawlers sending out quotas, communications from drugs gangs, secret government messages and even communications with UFOs. One thing we do know is that they are perhaps one of the things that's presented themselves to us as a society with as much secrecy and mystery as Area 51. When number stations started becoming popular amongst listeners in the 1960s and 1970s, many people wrote to various government departments to try to get answers on what these stations were. There was often no response and any that did reply always denied any knowledge. These stations that broadcast numbers, letters, Morse code and data in many different languages at all hours of the day didn't officially exist. An article in the Daily Telegraph on the subject quoted the DTI, the UK's communications regulator at the time, as saying these number stations are not what you suppose they are. People shouldn't be mystified by them. They're not for, shall we say, public consumption. A British official once said that people shouldn't be interested in number stations because they shouldn't be listening to them because they're illegal to listen to. Very few government organisations have released information about them. Some have made references such as the Polish Institute of National Remembrance and other Polish archives, the Swedish Security Services and the National Archives of Latvia. Despite denial by various governments, the real purpose of number stations was made clear by numerous important spying cases and their subsequent court cases. Firstly, in 1982, Geoffrey Prime, a former GCHQ linguistics specialist, made a confession on his activities as a spy. Of the evidence against him, a standout piece was a radio receiver and a Grundig reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder that contained a coded number message in German. There was also a briefcase with a false bottom which contained a list of frequencies and schedules along with the ID he used to recognise any traffic that was meant for his reception. There was also a number of one-time pads. Jeffrey Prime said his reason for the equipment was that he was simply a shortwave listener who monitored the airwaves as a hobby. His neighbour stated that he heard German numbers regularly and was growing tired of the constant noise from Prime's radio. He even joked to his wife that he suspected Geoffrey Prime as being a spy. He was ultimately jailed for 38 years following his plea of guilty. Another case to feature number stations was that of Erwin van Harlem, a Cold War era spy for communist Czechoslovakia who worked in London under the aforementioned name as part of an assumed identity. On the evening of April 2nd, 1988, special branch detectives raided a third floor flat at 35 Silver Birch Court in North London. They found Van Harlem in the act of receiving a coded radio message in Morse code, and he also possessed one-time pads. The Morse code messages were alleged to have originated from Prague. Van Harlem's one-time pads were hidden in a hollowed out bar of soap and he also had chemicals for invisible ink and a coded list of dead letter boxes. 
A local neighbourhood watch coordinator had previously telephoned the police due to interference on the screen of a television in the form of dots and dashes of Morse code. Van Harlem apparently received 200 coded messages from Czechoslovakia and was jailed for 10 years following a trial. Other high-profile cases that reference number stations include the North Korean spy Kim Hyun-hui in 1987, the Cuban Five, five Cuban intelligence officers who were arrested in September 1998, Anna Montes who was found to be receiving instructions from the Cubans in code via shortwave radio in 2001, the illegals program involving Russian spies in 2010, and the case of Andreas and Hedrin Anschlag in 2011. In the aftermath of these court cases, it was clear to the monitoring community that the coded transmissions they'd been hearing did indeed come from a whole array of intelligence agencies and were destined for spies and agents out in the field. If you look online, you'll see that number stations have been categorised and given numbers such as E03, V05, G16 and S06. With no official recognition, it's obvious that these numbers were assigned by the monitoring community. Numerous groups did a lot of work on this back in the 1980s and 1990s, such as the European Numbers Information Gathering and Monitoring Association, better known as Enigma. Before these codes were assigned, listeners relied on catchy names such as the Lincolnshire Poacher, the Spanish Lady or the Counting Station to name just three. The Lincolnshire Poacher, perhaps one of the most famous, got this moniker because it uses the Old English folk song of the same name. Enigma, later Enigma 2000, did and still does release regular newsletters in which the public could find detailed information, listings and potential sources for all things number stations. The main categories given to these number stations were English Voice, German Voice, Slavic Voice and Various Voice, as well as Morse and Digital. English Voice stations began with E and then a number. German ones began with G. Slavic with S. Various with V. Morse with M. And you guessed it, digital, with, well, not entirely D, but rather various different letters. Various or V stations come from a variety of different countries such as Korea, Spain, Hungary and China to name just a few. Other prefixes include F for frequency shift keying digital modes, P for phase shift keying digital modes, XP for Russian 7 digital modes and HM for digital and analogue hybrid stations. In fact, so deep was this hobby into the unknown, the term number stations really became an umbrella term for what were identified as enigmas, oddities or basically anything clandestine that could be reasonably attributed to the intelligence services of many countries, unofficially. So, we named them. Well, not me, I was unfortunately only a child when all of this was going on, but the guys at Enigma named them, categorised them and started to build up as much information as possible, but they'd really only scratched the surface. Many number stations use Morse code, but they also use digital modes. Many more stations have a sister voice station, and data services often have at least two Morse equivalents. Data modes include phase shift keying, frequency shift keying, polytones, digital pseudo-polytones and any number of digital modes not understood by the rest of the world except the country using them. As for the deciphering of messages, well, they're not meant to be deciphered by Joe Public and this has never been achieved. One of the most popular methods of encrypting and decrypting the messages sent by number stations is a one-time pad. This truly secure cryptographic system was created by Gilbert Vernum in 1917, who originally developed it to protect electronically transmitted messages. His invention automatically enciphered individual characters as they were entered into a teletypewriter, as well as automatically deciphering them at the receiving end. This kind of character-by-character -character encryption is called a stream cipher, and Vernum's particular method is unbreakable if used correctly. His invention is now referred to as the one-time pad crypto system and has been extended to both manual and computerised operations. The key in a one-time pad system is a series of random numbers. 
Furnham's invention used long strips of paper tape, but in the manual version of the system, numbers are printed on small pads of paper that are easily concealed. Some were written on chewing gum which could later be eaten, others in bars of soap and even walnuts, and some on just sheets of paper. Each sheet of paper in the pad is used only once, then discarded and permanently destroyed. There are two copies of the one-time pad. The person wishing to send the message and the intended recipient both have identical pads. The pads can be as simple as 5 equals A, 9 equals B, etc, etc, or the numbers sent over the radio can refer to words, lines and pages of a book that both the sender and recipient have, and that's a really simple explanation of one-time pads. Modern digital stations use experimental modes and forms of encryption that, like one-time pads, cannot be broken by anyone except the intended recipient. During the Cold War, you could hear a whole host of stations from many different countries like the USSR, Bulgaria, Czechoslovakia, Poland, Algeria, Egypt, the UK, the USA, East and West Germany, Hungary, France, Cuba, Yugoslavia, North and South Korea, Taiwan, China, Romania and Israel. Languages used were Russian, English, German, French, Spanish, various other Slavic languages, Korean, Chinese and even Tajik and Farsi. There are many stations that became almost household names and gained a cult status amongst the listening community and the general public alike. Some of the most well-known number stations are now inactive, but there are still some that are very active. The Lincoln Chapocha is perhaps one of the best known examples of a number station, with many listeners and viewers of the channel in the UK and abroad who recall listening to it as a child. The station transmitted originally from Her Majesty's Government Communications Centre in Gorkot near Buckinghamshire, and later the large military zone around RAF Akrotiri in Cyprus, and the station belonged to the UK. Its transmissions would open with the English folk song The Lincolnshire Poacher, which is how it gained its name before being classified as E03. The synthesised voice that replaced a real human voice would read five number groups, and transmissions would last 45 minutes. It's believed to have started transmitting long before the 1970s, and it disappeared forever in July of 2008. Another famous station was known as the Swedish Rhapsody, which, believe it or not, was actually a Polish intelligence station. Later categorised as G02 and then E23 by Enigma, the Swedish Rhapsody gained its name due to it playing Swedish Rhapsody No. 1 by Hugo Alfen. The voice read five figure number groups and was noticed in the 1950s. It disappeared in 2007 and the spooky music during transmissions earned it its place as one of the most well-known number stations. G03 was another well-known station operated by the East German Army and was famous for its eerie gongs and chimes intro, which was played from a tape that distorted and deteriorated over time, making it sound stranger as the years went by.
Gongs and chimes, categorised as G03, had a voice reader that was created using a Stasi Sprach Morse machine. The station fell inactive in 1990, and like others that play unusual music or sounds, is one that's well remembered. Many viewers draw the conclusion that shortwave number stations are obsolete and there's nothing to hear, but this isn't true. There are still many stations originating from countries such as Taiwan, Russia, Poland and Cuba, which transmit numerous times daily, 365 days a year. A quick Google search will yield daily schedules which tell you exactly where to look, and listening has never been easier with a vast array of online SDRs, and the Preon website provides links that you can click and listen as the stations go live. Some appear randomly, but others transmit so regularly you could set your watch by them. One of the most popular of today's active stations is E06, known as the Englishman. Not an English station, but rather Russian. Categorised as E06 by Enigma, the station has been active since the 1970s. E06 sends two identical transmissions an hour apart, containing five number paired groups, and is believed to be operated by a Russian intelligence agency. E11 is another very active number station operated by Polish intelligence, which has been around since at least the early 1980s. It was nicknamed Oblique since the station uses the word Oblique during transmissions, and has been categorised as E11 by Enigma. The station uses an automated female voice with an Eastern European accent and transmits daily. Another active station is S06, also known as the Russian Man. Linked to E06, S06 usually sends two identical transmissions 30 to 60 minutes apart and also sends five number groups. Believed to be operated by Russian intelligence, the voice has changed many times over the years, but the Russian man currently uses just that, the voice of a Russian man. I hope this gives you an insight into the world of number stations. There's so much more out there to read, but I've given you the basics in the hope that you'll read further and try listening for them. Of course, most of what we think we know has been compiled by dedicated researchers and listeners, and what we don't know probably eclipses what we do. I am, like you are, completely intrigued by this topic, and the whole thing conjures up the thought of a spy sat in a dingy hotel room, lit only by a dull lamp and the glow of a cigarette, listening to numbers read out on a shortwave radio. Nowadays I'm sure this isn't the case, and times and technology has moved on, but in spite of all this, there is still obviously a need for whatever service the number stations provide, and new ones have sprung to life in recent years. So, get a shortwave radio or an online SDR, Google the number station schedule, and get listening. You won't be disappointed.